Hello everyone, nice to see you again. Welcome to 2021. I hope you're doing well. So, first video of the year. It's been a bit of a delay. I've not been around for a bit because I've had a few things. 2021, trying to kick my ass, basically. We've had a bit of a band flu, I must admit. Um, that kind of knocked me on my backside. Nothing too serious. Obviously, anytime you get a cold with a high temperature and a bit of a cough for a few days, you get a bit worried in these days. But no, nope, nothing worse than that. Just went out for a walk, got a bit cold, managed to develop it into full-blown man flu. And you know how us men can really get knocked out by that. So, first piece of advice, if you haven't, get yourself a nice bit of merch to keep your head warm and then maybe you can avoid that illness too. Available from all good websites, or one mediocre website at least. Combine that with lockdown three here in the UK. So I've been homeschooling with three kids at the same time. And then on top of that, just really mega busy at actual work as well. So just not had a chance, not been able to get things done as much as I wanted to. One of the things I did was over the festive period, I took a bit of a break and said, right, they can all afford to skip a water change. I won't do a water change this week. And then what with things going on, they've not had a water change this week either. So there's kind of two or three weeks that all these tanks haven't really had the attention they deserve. So I thought we'd have a little bit of a look at all my tanks. One of the videos I wanted to make to start the year off was, this is the state of play in January. These are all the tanks and what they're doing. We can have a look at them. But I thought, let's just have a look at what a bit of neglect it does to your fish tanks. So we'll start off with this one. Let's go and have a look. So this is my discus display tank. As you can see, it's not fared too badly. And the main reason for that is it's, it's a well-established tank. It's well planted. It's been established a long time. Everything's in balance. So this kind of does look after itself. And this tank can do quite well. It can afford to miss the odd water change. And nothing too serious will happen. It is overdue a water change, however, so I think we probably should go on with giving it one. But as you can see, there's nothing too serious going on. No real algae outbreaks or anything like that. Even the glass looks pretty clean. It could do with a little bit of a wipe down. But yeah, this one, fairly happy with it. Nothing too bad has happened. So this is a custom display tank. It's got about 10, 12, something like that discus in there. They're all from Art and Ung, and they're Asian discus. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic looking and the tank's just doing really well. So no concerns with this one. All I've really been doing with this is just feeding it. Um, I do like to give this at least one water change a week, if not two. Uh, no ill effects whatsoever from skipping it for a couple of weeks, thank goodness. Underneath the main display tank, we've got a sump down here. Uh, filled with all kinds of things like Biohome and Alpha Grog and pot scrubbers and everything you can think of. Um, way over filtered this tank, but I use this kind of a, a refugium to hold lots of extra biological media so I can go and cycle new tanks whenever I need to. Um, so my regime for this is usually give the water a bit of a test, do a water change, and then everyone should be happy. I don't really need to do too much in terms of maintenance or plant trimming. Um, everything in here is quite slow growing, other than the lily here has started shooting off a load of runners again. Um, what I tend to do is chop these down so that it doesn't get too high, because I like it quite bushy down here. It actually looks pretty good. And there's still some remains from the java fern, which wasn't doing very well, but all the other plants, really green, really lush, really happy. So we'll go on and we'll do a water change. Do the water test, make sure everything's okay. But yeah, happy with this one. And we have this tank. This is Humphrey. He's my two-tone camphor flower horn. Um, he's my little pal that sits in my office with me so this is my work office um, as you can see in here and that window over there is the source of all the problems so it's got the blinds down at the moment but this is why we've got lots of algae on these tanks because we get direct sunlight on all the tanks in the office and they struggle quite a bit with algae when i don't keep on top of it so as you can see down in the bottom corners there's quite the build up there of the algae you can see it on the glass as i pan around i know when i test the water it'll be fine generally um, and as you can see, this boy is looking specifically, specifically, extremely handsome. He's doing really well, really good growth on him, really good bright colours. Couldn't be happy with him. I do have plans to move him down to the fish room soon to give him a bit of a bigger tank, or a bit of a longer tank. 
um, but yeah happy with them so this just needs a bit of a scrub down and a water change but let's give him a bit of food seeing he's up begging so this guy we've got a mix of all kinds of things we've got cichlid gold we've got some fluval bug bites some excalibur pellets in here i just dump in a little pinch every now and again and um, they seem to be doing the trick with this guy because he loves them and he's putting on some nice size too so that's him let's move on to the other tanks this one is the little aquascaper tank that i got from all Pond Solutions. This is the little 30 centimeter cube tank. Only 30 pounds or even less than that altogether. Um, check out a video up here or up here depending on what way around I've got this. You can see me putting this tank together but I think this is a, a fantastic little tank for this kind of situation if you've got an office, if you've got something like that. Um, bedroom, small room, just perfect little slice of nature that you can get in there and it doesn't cost the earth. Um, Again, everything's happy in here. I've only really got one better fish and a bunch of snails. He's over there having a little bit of a kip, as you can see at the moment. A little bit overgrown and um, needs a bit of a trim in here. And if the, down at the bottom, there's a little bit of muck built up that needs siphoning out. But again, it just needs a water change. Everything else is doing pretty well. Next to that, we've got the White Cloud Mountain Minnows. Um, this is just really in need of some tender loving care. Um, even before I got lazy in the last couple of weeks, this was already getting a bit out of control. Um, so if we have a look down here, there's lots of mold building up on this. It's meant to be a sand substrate, so the sand should look like that. But over here, it looks like this. And um, this is a dirtied tank with a sand cap, um, but that is just basically mold that's coming up. But if you have a look at the plants in here, they are just completely overgrown and it's getting a bit of a jungle in there. Uh, if you can look through here, you can see there's quite a bit of algae building up, some of that lovely hair algae that we all love. Uh, the fish themselves, they're doing pretty well. There's a whole bunch of them. I think I've seen some babies in here as well. And <laughs> it's one of those things that often happens is when you leave a tank to its own devices, quite often that's when it does its best. So, although I have been lazy, and I wholeheartedly admit that, there is an element of me that does like to just leave things be and let them get on with it. I can't see any at the moment, but yeah, there definitely have been a few babies in here. This is the Celestial Pearl Daniels, or Galaxy Rasbora, depending on your persuasion. Um, again, fine, it's just generally overrun. So as you can see over here, we've got the Java Moss Mountain has made its way almost halfway down the tank. So that's kind of grown and encroached a foot on that way. Um, again, this lovely hair algae, but that's all mostly the Leading window, I always struggle with algae with tanks in this this room. But the CPDs themselves, they're looking great. Um, so I have seen a few babies in here as well, which is the good news. Um, so the cherry shrimp live in here with the CPDs and they've both been doing a bit of a breeding boom. But that's the one good thing about this Java moss encroaching as it does. It spreads all the way around and all the way around to the back and comes through. It just gives them such a great bit of protection for a fry to grow up in. So I'm inclined not to do too much cleaning. I mean, I want to get rid of all this junk down here, but it's kind of it's kind of doing a job for me. So I quite like it. I'm, I'm loving the way that that's going. There is one interesting bit in this tank. Um, so as well as the breeding of the snails and the shrimp and the CPDs, um, this did house what could possibly be the world's oldest killifish. Um, if you've been following me for a while, I have marvelled for ages how long this fish has survived. They're only meant to live about a year. Um, but it finally died and I noticed it oh, maybe two or three days ago. Uh, my daughter came in and said, oh, you've got a dead fish in there. And it was down here. And I thought, oh, that's terrible. Because um, although it was the most long-lived fish um, <laughs> ever, you know, it's never good to lose a fish, but I'm pretty confident that it died of old age. I kind of forgot about it for a day and it wasn't until the next day that I came in to remove it. I thought, oh no, this will be terrible, I'll have an ammonia spike and all this kind of stuff, but I didn't. When I came back in, all that was left was that. The cherry shrimp and the snails decimated this in under 12 hours. Uh, there was no more than 12 hours between me being told and actually coming to do something about it. And it was gone. Um, 
So, the circle of life, as they say. But yes, this tank, it just needs water change. I am, I should clean it up and I will get a bit of a clean, but like I say, it's doing a job, this stuff over here, so I'm just going to let it get overgrown. I do have plans for this office in general that might require a bit of an overhaul and changing around of tanks, so I'm not too inclined to start rescapes and things like that with it at the moment. We might deal with that in the coming months. But it's doing really well. Um, just lots of life in this tank, which is always what you want to see. So that's it for tanks up here. Let's go down to the fish room. So down in the fish room, uh, we've got a few things going on here, a few issues that need attention. Uh, but let's start with running through the tank. So we've got this big tank here. This is the one that currently houses the angels. As you can see, they're all in there expectingly wanting food. Nothing going wrong there. I've actually just tested the water I've got there, not throwing the test strip away. Um, but it's just dirty. It needs a bit of a siphoning to get all this crap up. This is all from the, the plecos that are in here. They chew up the wood. And that's the detritus that gets left behind. But the water quality is fine. Um, just needs a bit of a tidy up. So this tank's fine. But this tank is going to go. Um, it's, it's held together by luck more than anything else. So it's patched up all over the place. It's really old and it just needs to go. I'm going to hopefully replace this with... Uh, three or four tanks that are a bit smaller because there's a two foot depth so if I go back two foot that way front to back I can then have one foot that way and I can get in four tanks quite easily that way which will let me keep a lot more um, different things so I can spice things up I get these guys will be swapping places with Humphrey uh, the flower horn um, and they'll live in the office with me and Humphrey will come down here but he won't live in one of the smaller tanks he'll live in this tank over here but this tank also will get replaced because it doesn't go all the way to the back. So I'm going to get a bigger tank so that can fit in a four foot tank there. That can also go back all the way and just give him a big 200 litre-ish space. He can call his own and he can be the kind of star of the, the, um, the fish room. So that takes me on to this side. No real problems with any of the tanks really. So there's not really anything in these two tanks. There's a couple of Daniels in there just keeping the filter going. Empty, we've got the pea puffers here. And they're all doing fine. Um, one of them is very skinny and will not put on weight. In fact, that it's this one here that it won't focus on up the front. But the rest of them are all fine. Um, I have just started a treatment of worming just to make sure that that's not the case for this. But yeah, they're, they're all right. Um, we've got some muck guppies in here, again no real problem, just a bit dirty, could do with a clean. One of the benefits about here is the majority of tanks here are on automatic water changes so I don't really need to do anything, I just need to clean the tanks every now and again. And you'll see a bit of algae building up in some of them. But the, the water gets changed automatically, that's what these pipes are all about. Um, so we don't really need to worry about that. We've got the guppies and the endlers over on this side up here, again all fine. They do need water changes on this rack because this hasn't been set up on the auto water change system yet. Uh, and not really lost any water volume or anything like that, so we're doing quite well. Loads of babies in all the tanks. Um, so, again, my theory of just leaving things alone does really well. I had been planning to, or th the way I hoped this would work out would be these would be muck guppies, because they're all muck guppies. Um, but there'd be ones that'd be red, blues and yellows. But as the babies have started to mature, there's all kinds of things coming out up here. So there's one in here that looks a bit like a green cobra and that's in the blue tank. So I don't know quite what's going on there. What I might end up doing is abandoning the, the muck guppies by strain and just having them in one of the bigger tanks and just having a, a muck guppy tank. So let me know in the comments what you think about that, if that would be a good idea, because then that lets me get all my guppies in there for the mutts. I have all my specific endlers down here, and then I can have some more specific strains up here. I think that would work out a lot better. Um, but the issue that I've noticed on this tank, um, well, what made me notice it was, look at the light difference. So lights, it's just so yellow and dark and dumb, dumb, dull even because um, I'd swapped that for a T5 light fitting over here. So there's two T5 bulbs in this big white thing here. It's actually a piece of guttering. Um, it's just going downhill. I looked at my last video in comparison to uh, what it looks like now. Just it's, The bulbs are obviously going off. 
Um, so it was a bit of a waste of time rejigging the lights there. I think I'll just get rid of them and replace them with a... So I've just put this small LED Nikru fitting in here to see what it looked like, make sure it wasn't just me. But look how much brighter it is, just that small one. So I'll swap that out with some kind of LED um, because these are the, uh, the, the Blue Star Endlers and they look great. Hopefully you'll be able to buy these soon, they'll be on the website, I know I keep threatening to put them on the website, I just need to get around to doing it. As I say, life keeps getting in the way, so I just get to enjoy keeping them for myself for now. But we've got plenty of these to go, uh, and they look gr absolutely great, I think. And then in this one here, we've got the blonde blush, and there's a few babies in here as well. They're doing really well. I've just added some crushed coral to all these tanks, but I haven't just added, I added it a few weeks ago. Um, because the water's quite soft here. Um, but in the ones where I've added the crushed coral, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a baby just there. The ones where I've added the crushed coral aren't doing any better than the ones I haven't. Because um, I wasn't convinced whether or not it made a difference. And so far, it doesn't seem to be. Um, so if your water is hard or soft, I think they'll do equally well. Um, up here we've got more blue stars and this is teeming with life. There are just absolutely tons of fry in here. Looking really good. These are the tiger endlers again, teeming with fry in here. But I do love these guys. We've got the wild guppies and that more blonde blush and some yeah, plecos in here as well, baby plecos. All doing really well. We've got babies in every single tank and it's absolutely fantastic when you can see that. They're all doing really well. But the thing that's gone wrong here actually went wrong in a good way. So all these lights in the fish room are all controlled off one plug. Um, so they're all cooked up to this mechanical timer here, which went kaput, but it went kaput in the off position. So it was actually really good. Um, I kept coming down and it was dark and I couldn't figure out what was going on because when you turn it on and off, it works that way, but the timer bit just wasn't spinning. So thankfully it went when it was off or I would have had the light stuck on and the old algae issue there. So thankfully it's not been too bad. So, if I revise my last video, I told you about the plans for the fish room where they're largely going to stay the same. Upgrade this tank, get a bit bigger. Might turn that into a muck guppy tank. Um, that's the only thing that I've changed really, so that me swithering as to what to do with that. Which would then give me one fairly large tank free, this tank free, and all these tanks free. Um, as well as potentially four tanks on this side, this size, eh, this side, which would be quite a decent size as well, maybe all the two foot tanks. Um, so the question then is what to keep? And it's like, ooh, that's one of the, the good things to worry about when you don't know what to keep and you've got lots of space to keep lots of things. Um, unfortunately, I'll not be able to keep anything massive because none of these tanks will be massive other than the one that will end up keeping the flower horn in. Um, so, can't really go for Oscars and things like that, which I really do want to keep one day, but not quite yet. Um, so open to ideas, what would you like to see? I'm definitely going to keep some of them aside for um, kind of compatible, discus compatible fish. So I want to get into breeding some of them with Cory's, for stair by Cory's. I want to bring in a whole bunch of Rami Nose Tetras, maybe some Cardinal Tetras, do some breeding projects with them. Um, other things so as I can have, because discus is my real passion, but uh, if I can get the, the companion fish for discus as well, that's, uh, that's just another interest for me as well. But, you know, I want to do a few new things as well. Try lots of new things, so you always get um, new surprises, new experiences, it's always good. And um, maybe some fancy plecos. Um, I don't know, so let me know in the comments what you think. I'm open to suggestions, I'll probably have half a dozen tanks don't know what to do with. Um, none of them are going to be absolutely massive, so they can't be monster fish that we're thinking about, but I'm, I'm thinking of interesting fish, things that you don't, they're not the norm, that would be good to make videos about, and we can all learn together, so as I'm learning about them, I can document it with the videos, and see how we go. But we'll leave it there for now, if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, because they are both really helping me out, and that would be fantastic, and you can follow along and see what we get up to in future weeks, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, bye! Thank you.